lengthen partial training or loading the muscle in the fully stretched position. Does it provide more muscle growth or not? This type of training is probably the biggest fad in the fitness industry over the last two years. And there seems to be a ton of mixed reviews on it. A lot of influencers like Mike Gisrotel and Jeff Nippard promote this style of training in such a way that if you're not including it in your training, you're missing out on gains. But then you've got kind of the old school camp who thinks it's complete utter nonsense and won't necessarily provide any better muscle growth than just training in a normal range of motion. And I actually happen to fall in that camp. I personally don't believe that length and partial training is gonna give anybody any better muscle growth than just training with regular ranges of motion. But in this video, I'm gonna do a deeper dive into this type of training, examine the research, examine and explain the physiology of how a muscle contracts to see whether or not it makes sense to be loading the muscle in a real stretch position if you wanna optimize your muscle growth. Okay, so first of all, let's talk about what actually is this lengthened partial training method. Essentially, this method states that by loading the muscle in the stretch and really emphasizing the stretch in each of your exercises, you're gonna promote more mechanical tension, which we now know is the main driver of skeletal muscle growth, and that's going to elicit better muscle growth and strength gains. Okay, so let's look at the physiology, and I'm gonna explain it a little bit. We're gonna kind of examine whether or not this actually could be potentially true. So mechanical tension. You see this term thrown around the fitness industry like crazy now, mostly because people see their favorite influencers using this term and they just kind of regurgitate it without having any idea of what it actually means. Mechanical tension on the muscle is quite simple. Mechanical tension is the actual force or tension the muscle cell experiences when it's contracting or when it's lengthening. And you have these things called costumers or mechanosensors on the cell wall that sense when the muscle is receiving tension. And essentially this is how the muscle growth stimulus works. These costumers, these mechanosensors, they sense the tension on the muscle cell. This stimulates a biochemical response inside the muscle cell that later stimulates the anabolic pathway known as the mTOR pathway. This mTOR pathway has been identified as one of the primary anabolic signaling pathways that essentially tell your muscle cell to grow more contractile tissue. And as your muscle cell builds more contractile tissue as well, the muscle cell as a whole has to expand to make room for those additional contractile elements. And this is where we have muscular hypertrophy or muscle growth. So it all comes down to really turning on this mTOR pathway. And they've identified that the costumers, the mechanosensors on the muscle cell is the stimulus for turning on that biochemical pathway that later turns on the mTOR that tells your muscle to grow. So the proponents of stretch training imply that loading the muscle in the stretch position creates more mechanical tension, or I guess, turns on more mechanosensors? Because the way I understand the physiology is that once you turn on these mechanosensors, you can't really turn them on anymore. Once that fiber experiences that tension, those mechanosensors are stimulated and turned on. So with the advocates of stretch training saying that you receive more mechanical tension by loading the muscle in the stretch position, well, what do they mean by that? Do they mean that you're stimulating more mechanosensors and thereby stimulating the mTOR pathway more? There's not any clear definitions of what they actually mean by this. And I think it's because they don't really understand what mechanical tension is when it comes to the cellular level of your muscle tissue. What I think is happening is that they're confusing mechanical tension with motor unit recruitment. So say I'm doing a lateral raise with five pounds. My muscle isn't very tight. It's not very hard. It's not contracting very much. But if I lift a heavier weight, the muscle gets harder. It contracts harder. And I think people are calling that mechanical tension or muscle tension, which is incorrect. That's the incorrect use of the term. What this is when I lift more weight and my muscles get harder and contract harder, that's due to more motor unit recruitment. Motor units are just packets of muscle fibers innervated by a single motor nerve. And the more motor units get involved, the more muscle fibers contract, and that's where we experience a harder muscle contraction. Because if it's a heavier weight or intensity of effort is higher, you need more muscle fiber involvement in order to handle 
that resistance. So with the length and partial training, what they're really experiencing is if you load the muscle in the stretch position, it requires more effort staying in that stretch position. And the way most people train, they get down to the stretch position and they fling up with momentum and it requires far less effort to do that. So since they're getting continuous muscular loading in a position where more effort is required, they're calling that more mechanical tension when in reality it's just more motor unit recruitment. But you don't need to do that in order to recruit more motor units. All you need to do is put a lot of effort into the exercise. And the best way to do this is to just train to muscle failure or at very least extremely close to it. And the reason is if I'm using the stretch position to generate more effort, well, the problem is it's a dangerous position of the range of motion. And here's the reason. When a muscle is in a more lengthened position, the actin and myosin filaments do not overlap as much and produce as much cross bridging. Therefore, it doesn't produce as much muscle force. So when you're loading a muscle in a stretch position, your body usually wants to incorporate a little bit of momentum to overcome that position where it can't really produce enough force to get out of it. So it relies on momentum to assist getting out of that stretched or weakened position. And we know that we need to minimize momentum if we want the exercise to be safe. Momentum produces external force experienced on your connective tissues like your tendons. The equation for force is force equals mass times acceleration. So if we are using momentum and accelerating, we are increasing the amount of external force on that connective tissue. Now here's the problem. Over time, if you're producing excessive external force on your connective tissues, you're going to accumulate wear, tear, microtrauma, damage on that connective tissue, which over time could weaken it and cause it to fail and result in an injury. And that's usually what happens with a lot of athletes or a lot of people who are in the gym training for a long period of time using a lot of momentum. They're just constantly beating on their connective tissue and then eventually it gets to the point where you've weakened it so much that it doesn't even require a lot of force in order for it to fail or snap. And this is why you want to avoid the fully stretched position in a lot of cases because unless you are really good at almost eliminating momentum, which most people are not, you're probably just gonna accumulate wear and tear in your connective tissue and eventually you're probably gonna get hurt. So it's just kind of a silly, pointless way to increase the effort of an exercise when all you really need to do is lift to failure or in very close proximity of failure. Now there have been some studies that show length and partial training promotes slightly better muscle growth than traditional ranges of motion but let's look at that a little bit more closely. Again, we know that loading the muscle in the stretch position is gonna provide slightly higher effort, therefore more muscle fiber involvement and recruitment, therefore more muscle fibers are going to get stimulated. So if you took two groups and you had one group just do a traditional sloppy, awful set like what you see in Crunch or Planet Fitness, and then you took an individual who voluntarily slowed the muscle down kept it under continuous muscle load and increased the effort, well, which group is obviously gonna do better? The length and partial group very likely experienced more muscle growth because the way they were performing their sets was higher in effort. It had nothing to do with the stretch, it had everything to do with the effort and the continuous muscle loading. So Jeff Nippard received a lot of flack over this because people immediately thought he was trying to sell something and he was full of nonsense, including myself, so Jeff Nippert actually conducted his own study to see if he was wrong about stretch training. And what did he find? He found that when you took two groups and both groups trained to muscle failure, high, high effort, the group that did the length and partial or emphasized the stretch position in their training saw no additional muscle growth at all. So Jeff Nippert actually went out and debunked his own belief by conducting the research himself. But for some reason, he still promotes it, which I really don't understand, other than maybe he wants to sell a program or a book in the future, which is probably likely. But that just goes to show when somebody has a belief about exercise or a belief about fitness, even in the face of a study you conducted yourself and you funded and you supervised, even in the face of this evidence, you're just not gonna believe it. And that's why there will always be people who believe high volume is essential for muscle growth and heavy, heavy weights is essential for strength and CrossFit is essential for functional ability, whatever the hell that even means. But here's the truth. The truth is very, very simple. 
it really doesn't matter how you perform your sets. As long as there's a high amount of effort involved, you're contracting really, really hard, you are going to get the maximum amount of muscle fiber, motor unit recruitment, and the best stimulus for muscle growth. But if you wanna save your joints in the process, it's probably a good idea to avoid exaggerating the stretch position and of course avoid lifting quickly to keep those forces down. So length and partial training, stretch training, what do we think about it? It's debunked. It does not provide any better muscle growth than simply training to failure. And it's just a more dangerous kind of silly fad way of providing a little more effort, but it simply does not provide any additional benefit in muscle growth or strength compared to just traditional ranges of motion training to failure. And the problem is a lot of people are very dissatisfied with their gains. And that's why they're trying to find some magic trick in order to overcome their plateau and to finally see some appreciable muscle growth. And the problem is simple. You might be training hard, but you're not training hard enough to optimize your muscle growth. That's the problem. It's not your diet, it's not your rep cadence, it's not your rep range, and it's certainly not whether or not you're doing length and partial training. It comes down to your effort might be high enough for some muscle growth, but not high enough for the best, most optimal amount of muscle growth that your body can allow. And that's what I teach in my coaching program. I teach you how to take your sets to that next level so you are getting all the motor units you can possibly recruit and stimulating the most amount of muscle fiber you can possibly recruit and when you learn to do this i've had people gain five to ten pounds of muscle in just four weeks training twice a week and that may sound insane to you because it is insane based on the awful way most people are training but when you know how to stimulate your muscle to grow those results are fairly common. So if you want to gain muscle fast or if you just want to save time in the gym, click the link in the description, book a call with me, join my coaching program, and I'll show you how you can optimize your physique with two workouts a week. Don't forget to hit the like, subscribe, and the bell notification icon so you can be notified when I drop more science-based, evidence-based training information to help you get in the best shape of your life safely without wasting hours a week in the gym. See you on the next one.